Mirmi Katawola, Francis Fox, Care Collab. Welcome everybody. I hope I can get through this Care Collab without having to go inside and change the whole setup again. But if I do, there will be a change of scenery. But for the meantime, it has stopped thundering and stopped storming. And I'm going to enjoy the peace and calm and quiet outdoors while I do this Care Collab, which today is together with Karin's orchids the Orchid Dock, and Orchids and Finbos. There will be links to these channels in the description below. And I encourage you to go there and have a look-see at the videos pertaining to the Francis Fox in other environments, other climates, hemispheres, and setups. In my case, I have them in Lekka and self-watering. And I have two for a reason. The one on the left is from Schwerter, and I got that in September of 2018. The one on the right is from Olympus 1975 on eBay, and I got that one in March of 2018. You would think that they should be looking absolutely fabulous after all this time. Now I have them back to back, just to show you what I got. From Olympus here, I got this as a cut, this back part, these two leaves and the two leafless bulbs. Then, miraculously, it grew very small little growths right here straight away, which was, oh, for me, very important because they were the first roots that I got and went into the pot. And subsequently, year after year, it's progressed two leaves, two leaves, two leaves, doing really well. And I think this time we're going to get a bloom out of this one, which would be the first time this orchid would bloom for me. So I have never had an issue with this orchid from the moment it started growing roots, getting it into lecker and self-watering and it is well established in the pot. In the summer of 2020, I repotted it and put it into this bigger pot because the fact that the growth was already coming up against the edge of the older pot. Great root system for a Richara Francis Fox. In my experience, I have yin and yang going on here. I had a struggling orchid that needed to find its mojo and I think we're gonna be okay with this one. This one from Schwerter. I got no roots. It is still not established in the pot. And we're talking again, September 2018. And you can see how wired it is in order to keep it upright in the pot. And it is starting to rain. We're gonna go inside. All right, well, <laughs> welcome back. We're inside now. Back to the one from Schwerter. So I got a cut with absolutely no roots. And based on the experience of the one I got from Olympus 1975, I'm like, okay, whatever. It's not a big deal, vigorous orchid. I got two growths out of that one very quickly. I'm, I was anticipating growth out of this one, just the same reaction. And I was very, very wrong. This orchid, I would say, has never, ever done well for me even though this is the one that bloomed before that one, and the blooms are so gorgeous. They're beautifully beautiful. This one is supposed to be the regular Francis Fox, and it turned out to be the really, really bright red, burnt oranges with all the markings and spots that you know. Very, very gorgeous. And the Nodosa parent in the history of the Francis Fox gives it such a wonderful, wonderful fragrance but I have very little roots in the pot. You can tell how bad this orchid is wobbling in the pot. I have sphagnum moss around the base, which is there to hopefully encourage root growth. And now it's probably very difficult to see. Let me see if I can put the light on. There we go. Hard to see and those roots look really bad, but they're part viable, part not. 
and even the roots from this new growth of the season of 2020. Look at that. There is no reason the roots should look like that in this setup at all. I'm wondering if there's underlying issues with this orchid and uh, this is probably not something that needs to be in a care collab but I have a lot a lot of underlying issues with orchids from Schwerter and I have seen a lot a lot of fantastic orchids from Schwerter on other people's videos. Mine were not of that nature and I am really struggling to see how this orchid is going to be of any relevance to me in the future of my collection no matter what the care is and the fact I have a comparison between the two is great because I know my care works based on what I see happening in the one in the back that is now absolutely established even though it had a rocky start as opposed to this one that I never never got going for me. I am loath to cut into the rhizome because that would weaken the orchid further. Right now, if there's anything left in this orchid, it has a lot more storage organs to sustain and try to pull through. The weirdest thing is that this growth here grew and tried to produce a spike and it got all woody and dropped the leaves. Then subsequently, in 2019 it grew this one and this one was the one that bloomed in the spring of 2020. Very strange. I mean I was happy to see it but it's so bizarre that now the next growth after the blooming here is also a little bit smaller and it does have a spike in it. There's something there but it's gone woody. There's nothing left there. It's dried out just like it did here. So I'm very, very loath to cut into the rhizome, but my suspicions are such that there's an F-bomb happening in that orchid. It is showing all the signs of that is what's going on with this orchid. Stunted root growth, the roots stop growing, growths don't develop naturally, normally. And no matter what happens, the orchid is slowly but surely declining. Now you could say, just cut into it, have a look, get the confirmation or whatever it is. Either way, find out. The fact that it's a Francis Fox, why I haven't done that yet. I don't want to lose a Francis Fox, I really don't. I love these orchids. But we have another eye growing right here. You can see an eye right there. So I'm, I'm very reluctant to mess around and start cutting away at this because that would be, I think it's, it, it, that would just take it down straight away. There would be no coming back from that. So I'm, I'm just hedging my bets, letting it absorb its storage organs, trying to keep it as best as I can by giving it enough humidity around the base if it wants to produce more roots or what it's going to do, just make sure that I don't damage it or stress it further. If this eye amounts to something, we have something to look out for. There's another little eye right there. So maybe the orchid itself is saying, okay, the front isn't working. I'm going to start working on the back. But that's just a little history of this one. And I wanted you to see the difference between the two in case somebody says, well, lecker and self-watering, that is not conducive for these orchids. Especially because one of the parents is the Myrmecophila tibicinis, which I also have. So you can see one of the parents, this one is the tibicinis, how flat it grows. I don't have the Brassocatlia polka dot, but you see how flat it grows and what a reluctant root grower this was. And I was always thinking, you know what, because of its flat growing habit, I can make it work in lecker and self-watering just because it's compact and flat. Normally, this growth habit would go up, oh, you're going on a mount, end of story. In my very, very hot and dry summers, I can't do that. I wouldn't be able to keep up with the needs 
of an orchid that grows structures like these. And this is not even the largest structure. So I'm showing this orchid because it was super reluctant to even grow roots. But after two years, it is now pot bound. And literally two years, it was laying on the media. I have a little bit of sphagnum moss right at the base there. And I tied it to a stake to keep it secure. And I made sure as best as I could not to jostle it or juggle it. And because of the massive storage organs, I knew it had enough energy to one day give me new growths and push out roots. The first two growths that I got were a little bit smaller than what you see here. So I have two leads. This direction of growth is smaller than the opposite direction of growth, but it took the second growth to start pushing out roots. And we are now in business because it's totally, totally lodged in. And I'm showing this again because I wanted to highlight the reluctance in my case of the roots growing on this Myrmacatabola francis fox by explaining the attributes of the species parent, which is the Myrmacophila tibicinus. Bearing all that in mind, this one, even though it was a little bit more vigorous than the one on the left, this one is a slower root grower than any of my other cattleyas or lalias that I have transitioned into Lekka and self-watering. And I think that is one of the biggest difficulties with a Francis Fox, with my climate not always being so humid, is to keep the roots happy and growing and making the orchid happy in order to produce roots. Considering how big she is, there are not a lot of roots in this pot. All of the roots that are in here are healthy, which was a massive, massive relief to me when I repotted her in summer of 20. But other than that, because of this parent, I believe the roots aren't as vigorous. That is my conclusion. It is, of course, it's not definitive, but having observed all three in the past years, I have a feeling that it is a vigorous grower, but the roots are always a little bit behind in their vigor. And for that reason, they are a little bit harder to cultivate if you get yourself a weak orchid. That is my take. Other than that, what I've done is given them the maximum amount of light. They do not, both pieces have not lived outside since they've been with me. They have always had a glass shelf of their own because I was dubious about this one having issues and there's no way it's mixing with my collection. And this one, because they both need the same light conditions. So they were stood on a shelf next to each other, but you know, separate, not touching, just because they both need the same amount of high, high light. And the only way I could do that is to put them on the same shelf right up against the glass where they didn't get any direct sun, but they do get a lot, a lot of light, especially during the summer. In the winter, it's a little bit more reduced on that shelf because there are no grow lights there. What they get is the light during the day. If there is sun for the winter months, they will get direct sun, but the sun is not that intense, so I can allow for that. And then the angle of the sun rises anyway during the summer months, and then they're in super bright shade. So that glass shelving area works really, really well for me. I have been fertilizing. This one always at 300 parts per million when it was in active growth. The reservoir at this point in time is a quarter to almost a half full, but not with fertilized water. Now that it is finished growing, I have it only with plain RO water. And that in the winter is something that I do when the growths have finished growing. I don't push any more fertilizer. I do not want my media to get all mineralized. And I am very, very concerned with the state of the roots. I don't want to lose them. And so I'm very cautious, even if I don't get blooms. I would prefer the orchid maybe to put on another one or two growths. That's another year or two down the line, as opposed to me 
focusing on wanting the blooms and not getting a very strong orchid at the end of the day. So if she is going to bloom this year without me adding any fertilizer, then that's fine by me. And if she doesn't, then that's fine by me as well. I know that she is definitely on the way of becoming a proper Francis Fox. And that is all I need. I don't need to have blooms. When this one bloomed last year in spring, I let it. Even though I wasn't pleased with it, it didn't, in my opinion, equate to a strong orchid. But I wanted to see the Francis Fox blooms. And as it was a weak orchid, and as I paid buku dinero for it, and as I had waited so long for something, I let the weak one here bloom, even if that were to mean her decline. And if she declines now, then okay, you know, there comes a point in time in your life where you say, okay, enough, we've tried, it didn't work. And if I do get to the point of having a look at the rhizome, I will definitely, definitely put that on film and then link that video into this Care Collab description because I think it is important for people to see that it is not always because of them that something's not working. It is sometimes the plant itself that's making it impossible no matter what you do, no matter what I do, it makes it impossible for the plant to thrive. Now what you haven't seen in the background while I was talking Every single time I touch this pot or touch the leaves before I touched the next leaves, I have a sanitizing towel behind the camera and I've been wiping my hands every single time. It might sound a little bit over the top, it might appear to be silly, but I don't trust the Francis Fox at all. That one over there, no way am I touching this one after addressing that one. So a lot of light, as much light as you can throw at it. I haven't had it outside in the heat. I have a summer temperature in the dining room that can go from 30 degrees to 40 degrees. My night temperatures in the summer are around 25 to 27 degrees. And in the winter, my temperatures in the dining room where we are stood right now are anywhere between 14 degrees, which is super rare. It has only happened once, and that was this past January but normally I have a temperature indoors from 16 to about 20 degrees. That is what these two orchids have had to put up with. And I can say that I'm looking forward to seeing if this one blooms, and I'm also looking forward to seeing if it doesn't bloom. But I am definitely sure that now with the one Francis Fox, I've got it. I've got it nailed, it's gonna be okay. And if I have to wait another 12 months for blooms, so be it. I have finally a Francis Fox that I believe is strong enough and healthy enough for me to not have to bin it. This one over there, we shall see. I want to say thank you very, very much to Karen's Orchids, the Orchid Doc, and Orchids and Finbos. Please go to the description and check out the links to their corresponding Care Collab videos. I am sure we're going to see some sensational orchids and where they are being grown. I appreciate your time so very much that you watched this video. Sorry about having to move indoors. Camera equipment needs to be protected. <laughs> Wishing you all a wonderful, wonderful day. And please stay safe. Take care. Bye.